Welcome to the WPIAL Blitz Show. I'm Badge. There's my buddy Ian. Ian, why don't you introduce our very special guest for this week's show? Yes. So we're fortunate to have Pat Carey from North Hills High School that just pulled off an upset of Pine Richland, the defending state champion. So congratulations, coach, on the big win this week and staying right in the middle of the playoff race in 5A. You know, we've been talking a lot this season about how loaded 5A is and how, you know, every week's a battle and it's really hard to kind of figure out what's going to happen come playoff time. And you guys have certainly put yourselves right in the middle of that mix. So congratulations and welcome to the show. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. So you want to talk a little bit about Friday's win? Yeah. uh, You know, Pine Richland was a, uh, you know, a big physical opponent. And uh, we knew going into it, we were going to have our hands full. But I tell you, I was really proud of the way our kids played. Uh, We really stepped up and uh, matched their physicality, um, you know, had to make plays in the secondary, uh, just hung on. It was a 13-7 score at halftime and kind of was a field possession game in the second half. And uh, we were able to hang in there and, uh, you know, it's, it was another barn burner because we, we, the last three games, uh, we've had the ball thrown in the end zone on us to uh, had to defend our end zone with seconds left in the game. And uh, uh, fortunately for us, this one worked out. Yeah. A little bit different uh, Pine Richland uh, team this year versus the last couple of years. Talk about that, of how, you know, it, you had, yeah. And obviously you've coached uh, at North Hills there for a while, you know, kind of seeing that same style. And then a big change. How was that in preparing for Pine Richland? As far as year to year or from, from a perspective of their injuries, or I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, me. just just from year to year. I mean, okay. obviously they had the MO of being this wide open, sling it around the yard. And yeah. now obviously a change in coaching there. How different is that for you to, you know, kind of well, throw everything out the window and try and work on, you know, a team with just a short amount of tape? Yeah. So, uh, number one, you know, they, they graduated a lot of kids from that team from last year. Um, you know, so, and they played a really tough schedule. When you look at the schedule that they lined up against, uh, you know, they, they had a, a, a tough, a tough go of things and, and they hung in there and they were in all those games. Uh, so, so, you know, they're quite honestly, they're a lot of the same schemes. They're different kids. Um, you know, it's a kind of a wide open spread offense. Um, I think also to the fact that their quarterback was not playing in that game made a difference for us. Um, Although I do think that the Palmieri kid that stepped in was, uh, you know, a really uh, good athlete who uh, apparently has some quarterbacking experience earlier in his career and uh, played a really good game. I just, again, I think our defense, our defensive coaches, our staff uh, really stepped up on Friday night. I think it was under two yards of rushing they had on Friday night. Uh, you know, and, and we were concerned because, like I said before, they're a big up front. They're a big team uh, and uh, have, have been able to push people around. So we were pretty pleased as far as that went. Yeah. So um, where, you know, you've got a couple section games left here. And um, so how far do you think this team can go? I mean, it's, it's been a special group this year with, you know, Robert Dickinson and all the rest of the, the kids. Uh, I mean, you guys have just had a, a really good year and have been a really fun team to follow too. Yeah. Um, a lot of good games every Friday night. Yeah. Too close, too close for our comfort. You know, we want to, we want to win a few and put them away before that, but it's a good group. And uh, you know, I think our quarterback has really stepped up over the past few weeks. Uh, John Green is a first year starter as a junior and has really come into his own a bit as a quarterback. He's uh, we thought he was a runner, a guy that could throw the ball around and he's really started to show those kind of skills these last few weeks. Um, but I don't know, you know, it, it's like you said, there's, there's a lot of teams that are going to be right in the middle of the pack. I think uh, as far as this thing goes, and quite honestly, I think it will come down to which team can stay healthy here at the end of the year, you know, and uh, right now, knock on wood, we're, we're okay. As far as that goes, if we can c- continue that, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to getting in the playoffs and trying to, to get something done. You know, yeah, it's, so it's, go you, ahead. Mentioned about, go ahead, yeah, you, you mentioned about John Green, the quarterback, and opening up the offense a little bit. Um, it, North Hills has traditionally been a, a pretty run-heavy team. Um, how's the, the, you know, sort of more open offense been received? Well, I, I think the kids, you know, that's the style of football that's out there now, and the kids uh, obviously want to want to pitch it around as much as we can. Um you know, I, I have a defensive background. I came through as a defensive coach and I switched over to the offensive side. Um, but, you know, I think you have to do your best to fit your scheme to what your skill is. And, uh, you know, right now, um, you know, we're not huge up front. Uh, we have a quarterback who's pretty dynamic. So I think 
putting uh, kids in space with the ball is probably our best bet right now. And it's proven uh, to be, you know, somewhat successful over the past few weeks. You know, uh, a consistency seems to be obviously the MO there at North Hills, uh, you know, in one form or another, what have you been there since 1998? And, you know, previous to that, you had a pretty long tenured coach. Talk a little bit about, you know, how the traditions there at North Hills are, you know, play into, uh, you know, coaching this team every single week. Yeah. So, so I played back in uh, 19, I graduated in 1998 from uh, North Hills and then went away to college and came back shortly after that. So it was like 93 or 94 that I, I came back and I, I coached under coach McCurry for uh, 16, 17, 18 years, and then had a chance to take the program over. But to be quite honest, uh, you know, we expect to win and we expect to get in the playoffs and, and make a run at it. And uh, that's not something we've done over the past few years. So we want to, you know, uh, again, I like this group a lot. Um, but, you know, the expectation around North Hills is to win. And, and we've been pretty consistent. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's time for us to get in the playoffs and, and see if we can't win a couple games and see where we can go with this. Yeah, I went by your stadium uh, a little while ago, actually, uh, uh, like uh, late summer when my daughter moved uh, into uh, really just uh, just north of the stadium there. I've got to get to that stadium and watch a game there. That's got to be some special place it, to play football, isn't it? It is. A, it is a fun Friday night. Um, it's a it's a big event at North Hills. Um, everybody from the Rowdy Rooters up in the far corner to. Uh, to our student section, to our band, uh, just a fantastic band. And we have a, a great following from our community. It's, it's really a big event. And, uh, you know, sometimes I don't know that our kids realize how special that place is because of the way it sits down in there and the oh. whole, um, you know, no track around the stadium. Uh, where do you know, people I, park? That's where I want <laughs> you know, it. Wherever funny, you can find it. I've, I've never had the park outside the stadium, so I don't know. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, it's up and down uh, the park and ride across the street, all, all up and down that highway. So it is difficult to do that. But uh, what a what a fun place to be. And any coaches I talk to uh, just really, uh, you know, applaud, you know, what a great place it is to play. And, and uh, we're, we're really proud of and, and, you know, especially when you win, you know, and if you continue to win on Friday nights, it just gets bigger and bigger. And uh, hopefully that's what we can, you know, we'd like to have a home playoff game here this year and see if we can't, can't do some damage there. Yeah. Martorelli stadium is always listed on the, you know, top 10 stadiums in Western Pennsylvania and all that. It's definitely a great place to see a game. I've seen a couple there. I grew up just North of the city. So yeah, it was, uh, I went to North Catholic, but it was, okay. yeah, it was definitely a place to, you know, a place to see a game. It's, it's an event there, like you said, and, you know, you, you talked about the, the whole community being involved, the band. I know I've seen people on Twitter just praising North Hills band this year, saying they're the best they've seen. Fantastic. So, they're yeah, fantastic. And, and huge support. And, you know, it's, a, it's a big event. It's not just a football game. The band is a big part of it. Uh, we have this neat tradition where the drummers come into our locker room uh, prior to the game. And it's, it's really neat to see these, these kids on these drums beating the drums and these guys with muscles and, and eye black on, you know, mixing it up, beating these drums. And it's kind of a, a neat tradition that we have. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, great. That, that's I'll See, that's the good stuff that, that yeah. we uh, really get to hear when we talk to the coaches is about the community, about the tradition, because it high school football is as much about just what you talked about, community and tradition, as it is the guys, you know, between the lines, because they don't perform between the lines if they don't get all this support, right? Absolutely. And, and as you said, and we keep saying this over and over again, but it's uh, North Hills is a fun place to play. It's a, a great community. It's, uh, you know, and, and we're, you know, a good, a good, uh, not only a good school, but we're good in a lot of, of other sports. So it's, it's important for our kids to go out and support those guys too, you know, cause it makes, it makes it uh, that school community feeling for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Ian. Um, so I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to ask about. Um, you know, best of luck the rest of the way, coach. You've got games at it. Fox Chapel, who's also two and one. And then Shaler, who's kind of at the bottom of the conference, but always, always plays competitive. So, you know, best of luck the rest of the season. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what you can do in the playoffs. Um, like you said, you know, I was looking over the, the history of the school. And like you said, 12 straight playoff appearances from 99 to 2010. And really the, the even after that, I mean, 
fifth or sorry, uh, 16 playoff appearances in 17 years from 99 to 2015. So the, the tradition has been there, um, you know, and, and you guys are, are doing a great job this year and you, know, you were right there with Penn Hills, you beat Pine Richland. It's, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, I, I really think that, um, you know, Bruce and I have talked to some other coaches this year that it's like the, the teams that get battle tested during the regular season are the ones that are going to be ready for the playoffs. And those teams that just blow everybody out, they don't know what to do when they get in a close game. Yeah. So. No, exactly. And, and I, I really, right before the Penn Hills game, I told our team that we, I thought we were peaking at the right time, you know, and unfortunately we could have, we could have snuck one out there and we didn't, uh, we, you know, we score, we go, we go for two with 56 le- seconds left in the game. And they proceed to take the open or the kickoff down past the 50 and, and punch one in late in the game. But I really feel that we're peaking at the right time. You know, as, as I said before, if we can stay healthy, I think we can get in this thing and maybe do some damage. Yeah. Well, great. Coach. Uh, Listen, hey, thank I you very much that. for your time on a, on a, obviously a very, very busy week. All right. Thanks guys. I appreciate you. Yep. All right. Take care. Take we'll care. see you later, coach. Okay. Bye now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wow. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I can't tell you how cool when you said that we were going to have coach carry on uh, how cool that was for me, because I just had to ask him the question of what it was like to play in that stadium, because it looks like the coolest place in the it world really to play. Is. Cause I don't, I mean, everything looks like it's just straight down and it's dug out of the side of the hill. And so I said, where does everybody park? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wherever you it's, right, it. it's right along the street. And, but that, you know, those special uh, places like that are what make high school football uh, uh, so great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and last year during COVID, because they couldn't get Heinz field for the Whitfield championships, they hosted a couple of the championship games there, which was a really cool environment <sighs> to have them in too. Um, you know, and, and really, like he said, North Hills has that tradition of winning. You know, they won a state title back in the early 90s when LeVar Arrington was there. Um, <laughs> they won. And uh, Eric Kasparowitz, uh, who wound up coaching at Pine right. Richland, was a quarterback for, for North Hills, too, on their championship team. So, um, you know, they have that tradition. They've been to they've had a lot of success. Um, you know, and, and coach mentioned he said they haven't been as successful lately. But, you know, in the, the five years of the six classification era, they've made the playoffs three times. So, you know, it, to, to North Hills, I guess, making the playoffs three times in five years is, you know, less successful. But I mean, for any other program, that'd probably be pretty successful, um, you know, but but I will note that they actually ha- um, haven't won a playoff game since 2010 when they went to the semifinals. So, um, you know, this this looks like it could be the year they've got a really good team. And, um, you know, coach talked about kind of going away from their traditional offense a little bit. They were always known as just a ground and pound run heavy team. And and now they're opening it up a little bit more and, and throwing the ball. And, you know, like he said, staying healthy, peaking at the right time um, and, and the doors wide open in 5a any anyone can take this we'll talk about this it, in a little yeah bit. it is and you've got control man so let's get started okay so we have a lot to get through tonight because thanks to everyone on twitter that sent us all their fan questions we have oh my a God. Whole bunch of fan oh questions wow tonight. all right i yes. love it so we'll get to those in a minute let's talk about what happened last week so the biggest win of the week did come from 5a but it was moon remaining the only unbeaten team in 5a topping upper st Clair. Um, just a, a ground and pound kind of game. These teams went back and forth. It was a field position game. Um, Moon had a 14 to 13 lead and wound up getting a safety late in the fourth quarter to win 16 to 13. Um, so congratulations to Moon staying above the pack in 5A. Um, and three of the, the best games of the week. So uh, all of these ones came right down to the wire. Beaver beating Chartiers Valley in overtime. Um, Newcastle, once again, Newcastle has been one of the most just exciting teams this year. It seems like every week they're playing a game that comes down to the last minute. Um, you might recall a few weeks ago against Montour, they threw a touchdown pass with less than a minute to go to win. This time around, they did it again with like <laughs> less than a minute left. Moon threw a touchdown pass and... Uh, or not moon, sorry. Um, uh, Newcastle threw a touchdown pass to win once again. So just, you know, to beat Blackhawk this time and just exciting game after exciting game for Newcastle and fun fact about Newcastle. um, Since Newcastle was the place where fireworks were invented, they set off fire. They have a fireworks show after the game when they win. So um, 
it's, it's you know cool. you are just so full of all these facts i mean yes. that that see that is that is so cool see these are the i'll be well, honest well, with i you. guess they, they had sorry fireworks weren't invented there because they were invented a long time ago but oh, in but china they're, right they're the, you know right, I mean? right right they, they had the first fireworks distributor in pennsylvania all right so yeah. there, there's a Italian fireworks guys. history there yes but you know at least uh w- when i pass all these tidbits along to all my district three and district uh, 12 people you know uh, uh, hopefully they're <laughs> yeah. let's move on all right so let's talk about this franklin regional latrobe game so uh, it was just nuts latrobe jumps out to a 20 to 7 lead in the first quarter franklin regional comes back in the second quarter to cut the lead or no, sorry, by the end of the first quarter, they cut the lead back to six. And then in the second quarter, Latrobe extends their lead by 20 points to go up 40 to 14, all right? So right before the half, Franklin Regional hits a hook and ladder play to score a touchdown. So it's 40 to 20 at halftime. Um, And then the second half, they score another touchdown, cut the lead to 13 at the end of the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, Uh, Their quarterback, Connor Donnelly, ran for a touchdown uh, with about six minutes left and then threw a 20-yard touchdown pass with just over a minute left to give them the lead. Uh, And Franklin Regional wound up winning 41-40, to coming back from a 40-14 to deficit. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Partially thanks to a hook and ladder play right before halftime. So, yeah, that that certainly was the game of the week. and, you know, shout out to the dude on Facebook who, when I posted that one is one of my games of the week, he was like, who cares about this game? And I'm like, and lo oh, and behold, I would have liked to see that back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, someone someone else jumped into the conversation. Okay. And after the game was like, maybe this dude knew what he was talking about because this wound up being a great game. Oh, my God. So um, the two upsets of the week, both by 13 to seven scores, North Hills beating Pine Richland, as we talked about. And then in 2A, Chartier's Houston beating McGuffey. McGuffey was the defending Century Conference champions. Yeah. Um, so that kind of throws a wrench into that conference as well. Some other noteworthy results, Elizabeth Forward beating Mount Pleasant to basically put themselves in position to win the Interstate Conference title in 3A. And then in 1A, Cornell beat Rochester, um, which I don't think was an upset because Cornell came in and was undefeated in conference play and Rochester had a conference loss, but some rankings had Rochester still ranked above Cornell and thought it was an upset, but nevertheless, I'm not calling it an upset, but it is a noteworthy result because Cornell is now in position to win their first conference title in school history with one more victory. So congratulations to the Raiders wow. and then Clareton hanging on defensively. I guess we know what coach we're talking to next week. huh? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we can get coach Dawson on. That would be pretty cool. Um, and then Clareton hanging on defensively to beat Greensburg central Catholic and put a pretty strong hold on the Eastern conference. So playoff clinchings, because we're there Hampton clinched their first conference title since 2014, the fifth one in school history. Congratulations to the Talbots. You can go back a few weeks on the Whippy blitz show and watch our interview with coach D Mateo from Hampton um, in six. A. these are just teams that have, well, that was just last week. Yeah, that was last week. Yep. Yeah. So the other ones are just teams that clinch playoff spots, not conference titles yet. So Mount Lebanon in six, a clinched a playoff spot moon and Bethel park in five, a have clinched playoff spots in 4a bell vernon mckeesport thomas jefferson and obviously hampton have clinched playoff spots in 3a north catholic freeport central valley and avonworth have all clinched playoff spots in 2a sarah catholic washington chartiers houston laurel beaver falls and neshanic and then in 1a cornell clareton bishop canavan west green and carmichael so playoff pictures are starting to take shape here congratulations to all these teams yeah. for booking I mean, their ticket re- in it just Never seemed know to what sh- happens when you get there. It, it just seemed to come out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. sitting there going like, "Oh my god!" I mean, there's like two weeks left in a regular season. Yep, yep, yeah. It's uh, you know, and and all of a sudden, it's it's going to be playoff time. We're we're going to be um, we're going to be right there in the in the postseason once again. Um, yeah. So it's uh, you know, it's it's been a, a really fun season so far, and. Um, you know, we'll see where it all goes from here. Um, so next up, we have our player of the week, which wow. goes to yeah, this was tough this week. This was really tough this week. Goes to Wyatt Ringer from Beaver High School. Um, Wyatt has been really the heart and soul of this Beaver team all season. 
Um, he's, you know, basically was installed at quarterback, um, but he's been kind of doing a bit of everything between running the ball, throwing the ball, um, and Beaver won that overtime game. Um, so not only did he have four rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown and an interception during the game, um, but he scored the game winning touchdown in overtime. Um, so I have the video of that that we will show. And this was a this was a really important win for Beaver too, um, to, to beat Chartier's Valley. So here's the video taking the direct snap behind the whole line, powering it in for the go ahead touchdown. Hopefully that wasn't on fourth down. I mean, and then <laughs> this was this was they came up with a stop on defense to win the game. And for Beaver, a team that uh, finished in last place in the conference last year, um, you know, now being in position to potentially make the playoffs. Really, thanks in part to a whole team effort, but but Wyatt in particular has just had a great season. So congratulations to him on being our player of the week and for everything he's done for the Bobcats this season. Um, and yeah, like that's you, a heck of a performance. He outdid a six touchdown performance. Yeah, and like like you mentioned, um, we had our first six touchdown performance of the season. Uh, Max Rocco from Sarah Catholic, the quarterback, threw for 233 yards and six touchdowns. Um, four of those went to receiver Terrell Booth so um, just an all-around dominant performance from Sarah Catholic they had they had last week off so I think this week they got it all back they kind of took it on <laughs> yeah they put up 62 points and uh yeah, he, they, he just threw as many touchdowns as he would have done in two weeks anyway so much, you know pretty much he's back right back on track uh that Sarah team is really good um Connor Donnelly from Franklin Regional. I mentioned him leading their comeback um, in that epic game against Latrobe, throwing for three touchdowns and running for another. Najee Burt from Steel Valley, who um, won our Player of the Week a few years ago, or sorry, a few years, a few weeks ago when he had a five <laughs> touchdown <laughs> performance. This is his third five touchdown performance this season. This that's is that's incredible, insane. What's Jeez. the what's? I mean, is there like, are you keeping? Is he like uh, in uh, threatening any like? uh and like uh yearly touchdown records or anything uh probably not no to be honest with you um so tyler boyd who we all know from yeah. clarton high school pit sure. and, and now the cincinnati Bengals, had the single season record um for touchdowns scored uh, but it was actually just broken um two years ago by a kid from west green high school um and uh, Ben Jackson was his name. He broke the Whippeal single season rushing record and scoring record that season. Jesus, um, that's he, incredible. He ran for over 3,000 yards um, in the season. And first Whippeal player to ever run for over 3,000 yards. But where in a is he now? I guess uh, that's, he that's... went to Army, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if he's still there, but I know he got a scholarship from Army. And he scored, uh, Ben Jackson scored 50 touchdowns that season. <laughs> So that's that's including the 50? playoffs. Yes. Five zero? Five zero. Fifty touchdowns? Fifty touchdowns in twelve games. Yes. <laughs> he had <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess. It, yeah, that's yeah. just incredible. He he had, let me see here. One, two, three, four. He had five weeks of five touchdowns, and then he had he finished off the regular Ben. This is Ben Jackson. We're talking about. He finished the regular season in 2019 week eight with seven touchdowns and week nine with eight touchdowns. So he scored 15 touchdowns in the last two weeks. Who was he playing season. against F and M furniture? I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, yeah, West green playing in the one, a tri County South. When you get an athlete, that's, you know, a yeah. D one caliber, playing at a 1a school like yeah. you know he's just he was just, I, I went to see him that season he was just far and away the best player on the field i mean it was yeah. incredible and then something you don't see very often Braden lambert the kicker for west allegheny kicked not one but two 40 yard wow. field goals which is impressive for a high school kid that's really impressive so yeah um you know a lot of good performances this week um a lot of four touchdown performances that didn't even make the list wow. here because of you know all that's these guys just putting up crazy stuff. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yes. So um, on to the streak watch, which I know is one of your favorite uh, parts of the show. But there's um, no red in it this no, week. No red in this week. Everyone that had a winning streak kept winning. Everyone that had a losing streak 
well, that was in the top five, I'll say, kept losing. Avella snapped an eight-game losing streak um, with their win over Bentworth, which actually kind of puts them potentially in position to challenge for a playoff spot, which is kind of funny, but whatever. Um, and then Riverside uh, played Elwood City, who had the top losing streak. So you had a team on a seven-game losing streak against the team on a 22-game losing streak. So something had to end, and it was Riverside streak. So um, we still have eight remaining winless teams in the Whippeal. Um, we have 11 remaining remaining undefeated teams. I believe this is the second or third week in a row that none of those undefeated teams have lost. So um, those guys keep trucking along and, um, you know, into conference play. The only, the only one that changed here was Pine Richland, uh, them snapping their 11 yeah. game conference winning streak. Uh, but the conference losing streaks all continued. And um, yeah, my alma mater, North Catholic, continuing to have the longest conference winning streak in the WPIAL. Shout out to the Trojans. And uh, McGuffey, that loss I talked about earlier, ended their nine-game conference winning streak. And a new addition to the streak watch is playoff streaks. Um, so Thomas Jefferson and Al Equipa have both made the playoffs every year since 1994, which is just an incredible yes, run of success. Nice. <laughs> and and for Al Equipa, and through all of the upheaval and change and everything else to just keep on keeping on you yeah. know be having to play up and everything like that that's yeah. incredible that's it, for Al Equipa, it's especially incredible because like you said playing up not only were they they're a 1a size school that was playing up in 3a but got forced up into 4a this cycle um you know they can clinch their 27th straight playoff spot with a win this week um and, and they're unbeaten. Thomas Jefferson's conference. already in, right? TJ's already in. McKeesport's in. Um, a lot of these other teams can get in. Um, Mars and South Fed are the only two here that could potentially be in a little bit of trouble on the on the playoff appearance side. On the other side, Leechburg is one win away from snapping their 32-year playoff drought. So it's very possible that the Blue Devils get in and uh, snap well, that drop. Uh, yeah, there's, an, there, there's another bullseye on a coach's back there, yep. Leechburg, for uh, to be on the show, right? Yeah, they, they have not made the playoffs since 1988. So, um, you know, wrap your head around that one. <laughs> it's been, <laughs> been quite a while. Um, South Allegheny also potentially has a chance in the Interstate Conference to get in the playoffs. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. But for the rest of these teams with the playoff droughts, not looking very good um, to, to get into the post. You know, if I wasn't on this show, I mean, uh, this is just like way too good, man. <laughs> I've got it all. I told you. And our buddy Andrew Cohen, he's got it all. I tell you what, he sent out a lot of great information here uh, this evening. We tape on Monday night. Andrew uh, sent a lot of great information on, you know, a lot of great athletes and a lot of them in the WPIAL. Um, Andrew will uh, work with everybody individually to design a program. And whenever you have any questions about how your recruiting is going, you just call them. I mean, uh, you know, or send them an email, but you have somebody you can talk to. I think that, that, that's the overriding thing when uh, I talk with anybody and any family about recruiting is, you know, who do I talk to about this? What do I need to do? And, you know, that's what's great about Andrew. He always picks up the phone. He always works with everybody. And uh, he's got camp starting out here, uh, early part of December. Highly recommended you get an early start on this stuff, guys. Give Andrew a call. 570-428-2872. I attended his camps last year. I think he's got 40 colleges already lined up for his December 7th. Um, camp that's going to be up in the Scranton area. It is indoors, so you don't have to worry about weather. So, hey, maybe good 40 times, you know? So, uh, anyway, give Andrew a shout out. Yeah, great. Thanks. So, now on to our fan questions. We got a lot this week. So, wow. um, first one from Spencer Lynn, who sent us some really good questions so far this year. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Spencer. And another good one who's on your Whippeal Player of the Year watch list? So, I tried to put together um, you know, I always like to think of things by classification because sometimes it's not really fair to compare, you know, a kid playing in 5A or 6A with a kid playing in 1A or 2A. Um, and so 
tried to just put together a list of kids that have, have had outstanding seasons. And this doesn't even really, this is just scratching the surface of it. Um, you know, the, the three kids from Mount Lebanon, Alex Texa, the running back, Joey Daniels, the quarterback, and Eli Heidenreich, the wide receiver, they're all just special, special players. I know Heidenreich's committed to Navy. Um, I think the other two have a couple offers as well um, that they've just been, been outstanding at the head of Mount Lebanon's offense. And defensively too, they've, they've, really played well um, that that blue devil team you know they beat central catholic two weeks ago and then this past weekend looked like they were in a battle with norwin it was seven seven at halftime and then just exploded in the second half to beat them 35 to seven you know and you look at a 35 7 scoreline you don't think much of it but i mean those kids have had the battle every week and they've gone out there and performed yeah um, i mean a, a yeah. lot of uh, hopefully what you should do is just like uh, take a picture of this slide and then <laughs> just send it to the guy who asked the question because it would take us an entire program just to go through the watch list. It would, it would. And uh, two, two players uh, potentially that I want to, you know, keep keeping an eye on these next few weeks are Trenton Carter from Carmichael's and Maddox Terschel from Fort Cherry, both playing in one a, but potentially their dual threat quarterbacks have the chance to get into the elite 1000, 1000 club, which is when players both pass for a thousand yards and rush for a thousand yards in the same regular season, regular season only. So there's only been 11 players in Whippeal history that have accomplished that. Um, and both of those guys uh, potentially could get there. Um, so it's, it's, you know, definitely two guys I'm keeping an eye on their stats every week to see how close they get. Um, but a lot of good players, a lot of good performances all around. Um, I mean, these lists probably could have been 10 or 15 long. So I just, you know, tried to, to pick to some of the somewhere. best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we will award our players of the year in each classification at the very end of the year. So, you know, it's a, it's a tight race. Nothing is wrapped up yet by far. Um, so some more questions uh, from our good friend, the ref of Pittsburgh. How come schools are turning away games when they have to forfeit and can play another school? That's a great question. Um, and, you know, some of it could be injuries that they don't want to, you know, they know that your favorite topic, Bruce, that only conference games matter. So, yeah. um, you know, if, if you have a chance to not play and get an automatic victory and not risk, you know, your players getting injured, you know, maybe it's worth just taking the week off. Um, well, I think it, I think it has a lot to do with uh, when the game occurs. Um, yeah. And I can only, you know, a case in point was, you know, right dead in the middle of the season, you know, Governor Mifflin, you know, lost the game and just so happened Harrisburg lost the game. I mean, these are two knockdown drag out guys and uh, they decided to play one another. Now, clearly, because it was, you know, actually in the first you know in in the first half of the season probably makes more sense there you certainly wouldn't want to do this you know uh second half of the season or going into the playoffs to risk you know injury or what have you but i think that there's enormous um uh i think timing is everything you know and i love my buddy ref of pittsburgh there i know that when i was doing the harrisburg cd east game he was commenting on the fact that the, uh, i took a picture of the referees for uh uh referee appreciation week he was commenting on the fact that some of the refs didn't have like blue bean bags so i mean the, <laughs> the guy's got a lot of attention to detail he does and he does. Uh, i really like him i really appreciate everything that he does but i think it's all about timing on whether they do or don't accept the game yeah yeah, I, I agree with that. And timing on when a game gets canceled, you know, if a game gets canceled on like Thursday or Friday morning, it's a lot harder than if it's like canceled Monday or Tuesday to potentially find someone. Right. Um, and then from our friends down in Brownsville asked how many teams in four years will leave the Whippeal and go independent. So as we know, we're entering another realignment cycle this year. Um, we've already had Albert Gallatin in Uniontown um, go independent. And I know that Brownsville uh, has talked about it at the school district level, you know, potentially considering going independent. And, you know, if we, if we go back a few slides, you can kind of probably see why they're considering it that, you know, they've lost 19 in a row. Um, they haven't made the playoffs in 20 years. So they've been and Brownsville was a really, really good program, uh, you know, back in the eighties the and nineties. And just like, since the calendars flipped to the two thousands, this, this, <laughs> this millennium has not been good to them. Um, well, I'll let, I'll let yeah. you answer this question. And, and I have, I, and then yeah. I have an answer, even though I'm you're Mr. Whippeal, I can tell you 
my opinion, but yeah. go ahead. So I, I would think, you know, in the immediate future, I think Brownsville and possibly Connellsville may consider it. Um, you know, Connellsville, another school down in Fayette County, pretty close to Uniontown and Albert Gallatin geographically that, you know, have seen what they've been able to do going independent and, you know, winning a couple games, starting to rebuild their programs a little bit. Connellsville might consider it. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on them. I think in the immediate future, Brownsville and Connellsville are probably the only two. Um, the other one that's probably worth keeping an eye on is Union. I know we talked to their head coach um, earlier this year, um, and they had actually explored uh, doing a co-op. Um, so not going independent, but just because they have such a small roster size, you know, trying to co-op with another school um, up in Lawrence County, somewhere around Newcastle. So um, I don't know if they would fully go independent because to go independent, you still need the roster numbers to be able to play. Um, but Union is one that kind of gets brought up potentially for a, um, you know, a co-op. And then within four years, you know, that's another another realignment cycle. Um, a lot of those small schools that with low roster numbers potentially, um, you know, could could look to do co-ops or could look to go independent and we'll just you know see what happens well brownsville is not a, a 1a school correct i mean they're no, brownsville they're... brownsville's in 3a right now mm -hmm. they were they were a struggling 2a program that their enrollment just knocked them into 3a by like one or two kids so they were a struggling program in 2a but then had to move up and have just been totally outmatched the last two years well look i think that uh if the wpiaal continues on this path of basically just aligning their, um, you know, th th their, their uh, conferences by, uh, by class and by proximity, you're going to have more teams back out because you have, you know, what that is, is that that's the, uh, the BCS mentality. Okay. That, you're going to line everybody up like that without any human intervention, okay? There are programs that still want to play football, but yet can't compete at that level, okay? Where a lot of conferences and and that will actually bring, you know, there's a lot of five and six A schools in the eastern half of the state that are playing against mostly lower classifications because they can't compete at that level. So, to the my answer to that question is is that as long as the WPAL takes this mentality that it's by class and proximity, there's going to be more teams leave. Okay, that's that's a good answer. Um, so not, our next question from our buddy Nathan Grella: Does the Big Eight have the three best four A teams in the state? So the Big Eight is the conference with Bell Vernon, Thomas Jefferson, and McKeesport. So looking at last week's state rankings, because we record on Monday night, the state rankings don't come out until Tuesday. Um, Penn Live had Bell Vernon at two, Thomas Jefferson at four, and McKeesport at eight. Um, so that's the, the statewide rankings that come out of the Harrisburg paper. Trib Live, which is a paper out of Pittsburgh, um, had Bell Vernon at two, Thomas Jefferson at three, Aliquippa at four, and did not rank McKeesport. And then the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette had Bell Vernon at one, Thomas Jefferson at two, uh, and did not rank either Aliquippa or McKeesport um, in their top five. So I think, you know, unanimously here, Jersey Shore gets ranked in the top five. Bishop McDevitt gets ranked in the top five. Um, Valley View is in the top five and two out of the three. Um, and I think Aliquippa will certainly have something to say about, you know, being in that, that top five as well. But McKeesport's a really good team. And I think everyone's just kind of slept on them this year. Um, but McKeesport's been really, really good. And, you know, they're going to get tested the next few weeks. They've got Thomas Jefferson this week. They've got Bell Vernon next week. So we're going to see what this team is made out of um, the, the next few weeks. So I don't know if the Big Eight has the best three teams in the state, but I'd probably say they have, you know, I'd say three of the best six or seven teams in the state. <laughs> You're, you're giving the diplomatic answer to Nathan. I mean, it is, it's, the answer is no, but clearly in my mind 4a is the deepest division in piaa football this year i mean there are 10 teams that really have a legitimate shot at winning a state championship that's that's not the case in any other cl classification uh so um yeah just take a look at i mean those rankings 
Um, and like I said, I mean, my gosh, Jersey Shore. I mean, they made it to, you know, Jersey Shore and Thomas Jefferson. And I tell you what, the team that, I, don't ask me why, but nobody seems, I mean, they're ranked up there, but nobody seems to talk about them too much as Bishop McDevitt. I mean, they are just like rolling. Uh, so, uh, yeah. 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 Well, and, and, uh, you know, since I know you love your power rankings, I, I looked at the <laughs> district three football power rankings and the top ranked four a team in district three is LS Lampeter Strasburg. Yeah. They're not even a, on this list. Well, yeah. They're, like they're the tenth 10. in the, yeah. It, with a, with a rating of uh, 0. 0.710. Okay. So they're at 0. 0.710 Burke's Catholic is 0. 0.706 and uh, Bishop McDevitt's 0. 0.701. So me running that same formula for the Whitfield teams, Bell Vernon is at, 0.824 Hampton's at 7.8 and TJ is at 7.5 Aliquip is at 7.49 right so, is at 7.31 so these are all yeah so so that's a yes then if if, if we use that for Nathan if we right? use, if <laughs> that that I think you know confidently saying based on that formula that the uh the Whipfield teams are better than the district three teams, but you know, it'll all get worked out on the field. So we'll we were, well, we, I mean, you have to put Jersey shore in that equation right. and Valley view and whatever like that. But anyway, it's, it's good, good fun. Thanks to Nathan. Uh, a good friend of the show. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And finally from the North Hills football insider, a timely question with the huge win Friday against Pine Richland. Do you think North Hills has a chance at winning the Whipfield five, a crown? And 5A is absolutely wide open. So using really? that same, uh, all right, here you go. So you don't the, think, you don't think that moon is, 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 I wouldn't say prohibitive favorite, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that, that they, they're not the favorite. I think, I think moon is the favorite, but moon has also won a lot of really close games this season. So, you know, it's not like moon's out there. Moon's not out there blowing people out. Like Pine Richland was blowing people out last year. Right. You know, um, moon, but moon, their power ranking sure looks good. Yeah. I, you, you're yeah. becoming a fan of the power ranking. I, aren't I you? like, I like math. It's, it's easy to do. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I mean, moon, moon beat Woodland Hills 15 to nothing. They beat South Fayette 28, 13. They beat Peters Township 29, 26. They beat Upper St. Clair 16, 13. So Moon's last two games were both three point victories. You know, they're winning. They play tough defense. They got a good, like 240 pound running back in Dylan Slava. But they're winning. Um, they're okay. Winning. These other they're teams winning. are losing. Yes. Not um, a lot, but I'm just saying they, they've lost games. Yes, that is that is true. Moon, Moon will probably enter the playoffs as the only undefeated team, although they have to play a Bethel Park team who now suddenly looks pretty darn good, too. Yeah. Um, after they just beat Peters Township this past week. So I put your D3 power ranking formula over here. And then this is my Gardner points plus formula here. So the Gardner points plus formula is 100 points for every victory. And I did this just based on their 5A games that they played. So I oops, sorry. Um, so there's there's the conference record, which is what will actually decide who gets in the playoffs. But for turn, for this ranking, you know, I looked at all the games they played against 5A opponents. Um, so I threw out the games from against teams from other classifications. So 100 points per victory and then 10 more points for each victory the teams that they beat had. Um, so like Moon got 600 points for their wins and then the teams they beat had 13 victories combined. So they got an extra 130 points. So, um, but I mean, even- So how, you, how would you answer the question then that they're posing? Are they, do they have a shot? I mean- Anybody has a shot. Uh, but what I'll say is, you know, Moon beat North Hills 38 to 7 uh, earlier this year, which was their Moon's biggest win of the season. Um, so I think there is still a sizable gap between Moon and North Hills, but some of it just depends on how you get seated, right? You know, Moon could draw like a, a gateway or a Penn Trafford in the, the second, in this quarterfinals or the semifinals. If North Hills is on the other side of the bracket, you never know. Um, um, it's, it's it, important to have a home game, at least one yeah. home game. Right now, I don't think North Hills would have a home game, a first-round home game, would they? It would be a toss-up. So the, the, 
with 12 teams making the playoffs, the top four will get buys to the quarterfinals. So they'll host the quarterfinal games. But then seeds five through 12 will play first round games. So seeds five, six, seven, eight will get first round home playoff games. So it's kind of a toss up for, you know, and, and with three conferences, right, it seems pretty straightforward that, okay, your three conference champions probably get three of the buys. So, you know, your Moon, your Penn Trafford, and then whoever wins the Northeast between uh, Pine, Pine Richland, Penn Hills, um, you know, North Hills, and uh, Fox Chapel are all tied at two and one right now. Um, on tiebreakers, Penn Hills has it. Pine Richland might get it by the end of the year based on time. We'll, we'll see what happens. But well, I think it's a pretty rate, e- I you know, think it's a pretty easy answer to say it would be highly unlikely. I think I think I'll say this. I think Moon has a, or not Moon. Sorry. I think North Hills has a very good chance of ending their uh, drought of not winning playoff games. They haven't won a playoff game since uh, 2010. So I think I they have a very good chance to end that. that. Um, but I'm not sure if they're. I'm not sure if they're good enough to get to the championship. Yeah, I don't I don't see them. I, I can see them winning one. I don't see them winning two playoff games. I think the second depends on who they get. Um, you know, if they get, yeah, it, second one depends on who they get and where they get seated because the teams aren't going to get reseated after the first round. It's if they get Pine point. Richland, I guess they'd be favored, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, you know, Pine Richland's quarterback was hurt for that game. And, and you know, Coach Carey mentioned that, you know, Pine Richland did have some injuries. So yeah. if Cole Boyd out, if, if Cole Boyd is back for the playoffs, that makes a little bit of a difference too. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. So speaking of the playoffs. Thanks um, for thanks for all of those questions. Those, yes, are, those great. are great. And great that, that, is, that is so much fun. That is, uh, that is a great segment. So yes. thanks to all, everybody who participated. Yes. Um, so looking at the playoff picture here, we've had some teams that have started to clinch. So we'll run through the standings as well. Um, just a reminder, standings are based on conference record, head-to-head results in conference play. The Gardner points are basically 10 points per victory of each team you defeated in conference play. And then margin of victory for the tiebreaker points is plus or minus up to 10 points based on uh, how many points you won or lost by. Um, so in 6A, Mount Lebanon has clinched a playoff spot and can clinch the conference title with a win over Seneca Valley this week. A Seneca Valley victory would force a three-way tie with Central Catholic as well because Central already beat Seneca Valley and Mount Lebanon beat Central. So, um, you know, a, a Seneca Valley would have to win to force a three-way tie. Um, but this is just how wide open uh, 6A is right now that, you know, the the top five, the, the playoff teams, I'll say, are pretty much set, even though Cannon McMillan and, and Baldwin are still kind of in the mix. But Cannon Mac has a head to head win over Baldwin. So that kind of gives them the edge there. Um, but like Seneca Valley, if they win their last two games, can win or share the conference title. If they lose their last two games and wind up four and three, like, then they're down in this mix of like the fourth or fifth seed. So, um, you know, it's, it's wide open for them as well. Um, and, and we'll see what happens in 6A where f- the top five teams will make the playoffs. Uh, in- I'm just, you know, I, I'm just having a hard time. Um, you know, go, go back to the last slide there yeah. if we can. I, you know, I, Mount Lebanon, in my mind, has has been you know uh, a you know a, a dominant team. I mean, you talk about yeah. Seneca Valley there. I mean, they've um, they lost or they lost to Moon. They did, um, and and they lost you know, to and got Catholic. wiped by uh, you know Central Catholic. I mean, granted, yeah. those are two pretty good teams, uh, but. Uh, you know, Mount Lebanon has has kind of showed like uh, that uh, that they deserve to you know maybe get a little bit more credit than than what you're giving them. I don't know. I mean, not well, that you're I, not giving them credit, but they're they're a serious contender that has a head coach that's won. Uh, well, I guess since TJ won last year, Bill Chervax won more. But up until last year, Bob Palco. Mount Nobody's Lebanon's even come close to them this year. They haven't has, had a close game. Yeah, they've been they've been dominant on both sides right. of the ball. That, that's Bob what I Palco mean. knows how to win in the playoffs. That's so. why I'm, I'm I'm you know that's I'm just I'm you know I just have to say that you know that, that you said it's wide open. In my mind, it isn't wide open. Mount Lebanon has dominated the you know on six A, but that's they, that's splitting hairs, I guess. So let's they, move on. They have, but the the thing I'll say is that you know in six A in the past, 
the team that wins the regular season title has not always gone on to win the Whitfield title. That um, you know, North Allegheny has won a handful of conference titles and gotten beat by Central Catholic or someone else in the playoffs. Um, you know, so winning the regular season title is great, but beating Central Catholic for a second time at Heinz Field, uh, you know, would would solidify this as a truly great. Mount Lebanon team. Um, it's a it's a very good Mount Lebanon team. It's arguably their best team since 2000 when they last won a Whitfield title. I'm, but it, it's a, it's a, I mean they're a great team, but they they have to do it in the playoffs. I'm gonna ask you. I'm just gonna ask you yeah. a question. Nobody's come closer to them than 21 points yet this year. Mm-hmm. If they win each of their next two games by at least 21 points, wouldn't you call them a prohibitive favorite? <laughs> to win this I, the 6a and you're I, gonna say no but i mean that's a do- that's in, in my mind that's a dominant team it they've yes they've been they have been dominant i agree with you what i'll say is that last year they beat and they only beat them by seven they beat central catholic 37 30 last year and then central came back and beat them 35 nothing in the playoffs so you know it's it's one of those things where central you're, not, catholic you're just is, not sold on mount lebanon I am. I need to see them do it in the playoffs. Is right. what I'll say. You're, like I said, that, you're you're yeah. not sold on them. Uh, I think that they. I think that they've had a, had an outs. I think that that's a, you know, a very good team, and uh, and that's why I'm just saying I have to be kind of like y- y- point counterpoint here, and you're saying yeah. that it's wide open, and I don't think so. But anyway, well, I, I guess what I was saying about being wide open is, and, and just one one more point though. Um, that, you know, Central Catholic has made the Whitfield championship game in seven out of the last eight years. Mm-hmm. They've won the last two. Um, you know, I know they graduated a lot of kids from their team last year. This is a completely different team, but like they, they also have a coach in Terry Totten who knows how to win in the playoffs and Bob Palco knows how to win the playoffs, but he right. did it at West Allegheny. We haven't right. seen him do it at Mount Lebanon yet. Yeah. Mount Lebanon hasn't been back to the championship game since 2000 when they won it. So they, they haven't been to the title game in 20 years. So, you know, I need to see them get over that semifinal hump is, is what I'm saying. Um, Mount Lebanon has been to the semifinals in three straight years. Um, but I just need to see them be able to get, over that hump and take that next step. Um, and I think they can do it, but they just have to, you know, I have to see it. Um, but what I meant about being wide open was that more for Seneca Valley than for Mount Lebanon, that, you know, if Seneca Valley could pull the upset, they could finish tied for the conference title. Or if they lose their next two games against Mount Lebanon and North Allegheny, they could finish like fourth or fifth is one like Seneca Valley has a huge so the, variability so- here. So for the playoffs, whoever yeah. whoever wins the conference has a first round by, correct? Yes. You said five teams make it in. Yes. That, that's an overwhelming advantage. Uh, yes. I think, you know, going into a pl- you know, the playoffs as well. Not that it's translated into Whitfield titles over the last couple of years because it hasn't. But yeah. you know, still at uh, my money's on Mount Lebanon right now. Um, and uh, I don't think it's wide open, but anyway, well, let's and, go. And- <laughs> and Mount Lebanon, Mount Lebanon was my preseason pick to win the six right. title they, too. So I yeah. Know. They, yeah, yeah. Okay. In All 5A, right. uh, Moon, who is the only unbeaten team, takes on Bethel Park, who really after, you know, Bethel Park had a one and three start to the season. And after they didn't win a game last year, you know, it kind of looked like, oh, here comes more of the same. And now all of a sudden they've routed off three straight conference wins and have clinched a playoff spot and are now facing moon with the top spot in the conference on the line. So um, should be a good game. Um, you know, and the, the other stories here, are Peters township who made the last two Whitfield title games being zero and three in conference play, excuse me. And then South Fayette being zero and three as well. And, you know, Peters graduated, I think 15 or 16 kids off that team that went to two straight Whitfield title games. So, I mean, that's a lot to replace for any team in one yeah. year. Um, and then South Fayette had a bunch of kids graduate as well. So they're kind of going through some transition as well, but you know, their coach, Joe Rossi's uh, been there, done that kind of guy. And they had both of those teams had a lot of success in non-conference play. I mean, they're, they're both four and four overall, but zero and three in conference play. So, um, you know, they, they had a lot of success outside of the conference, but once they got into conference play, they've struggled a little bit. Um, and some of that is injuries too. Like West Allegheny's star quarterback got hurt. I, you know, I thought West Allegheny would be a, a pretty serious title contender here in this conference and their quarterback got hurt. So, um, you know, so, some of it's injury related too. 
Um, in the Big East Conference, Penn Trafford really has a solid hold um, on the top spot right now. Um, they play Franklin Regional this week and can pretty much lock up the conference title with a win. Um, Woodland Hills against Latrobe, though, will probably be the storyline of the week because they're battling for the fourth place spot and the top four teams make the playoffs. So the last spot in the playoffs is on the line. Uh, Woodland Hills does have that win over Franklin Regional and Franklin Regional did beat Latrobe. So if Latrobe wins, the best they can kind of probably hope for is a three-way tie scenario, whereas um, you know Woodland Hills can lock up a playoff spot uh, with a win over Latrobe. In the Northeast Conference, this one is the one that, that with North Hills beating Pine Richland kind of got crazy now. Um, so wow. you know, Penn, Penn Hills beat North Hills, North Hills beat Pine Richland, Pine Richland beat Penn Hills. Uh, Fox How Chapel, many get in? Four? Four, yeah, top four get in. Um, but remember, like Kiski, Kiski, I know, and right? They're six and two. They they, they started five and zero oh and were one of the last unbeaten teams. And um, you know, they lost a close game to North Hills. They lost a close game to Fox Chapel and went out and beat Shaler. And now they're you know they're on the the underside looking up. And with only four teams getting in, um, yeah, this this one's going to be tight as well. Um, you know because. I think I think at the end of the day that Fox Chapel win over Kiski will be the one that gets Fox Chapel into the playoffs, um, and you know Kiski still has to play Penn Hills and they have to play Pine Richland, so um, it's it's a tough road to hoe for Kiski playing probably you know two of the the top three teams in the conference and yeah. Fox Chapel has played you know Kiski and Shaler so far. Um, that's a kill. So that's a killer conference tested, you know. there with only for four teams. I mean that's yep. getting in. Yep. Uh, moving on to 4A uh, in the Big 8 Conference, which we already talked about a little bit, McKeesport will be heavily tested the next few weeks. They play TJ this week. They play Bell Vernon next week. Um, that'll really sort out the top of the conference. Uh, Bell Vernon has been absolutely dominant this season, but you know McKeesport's been really darn good, and they're, they run a triple option wishbone offense that's just really hard to defend because you don't see it a whole lot anymore. You know, North Hills coach talked about how you know the, the spread offense is kind of um, you know, the, the flavor of the day now in high school football and don't see a lot of teams running that triple option wishbone anymore like McKeesport does, but they've been doing it forever and they keep doing it and they do it really, really well. Um, Laurel Highlands game against Trinity this week is all, pretty much a win and get in. It's a win and get in game for Laurel Highlands to get into the playoffs. Um, you know, Trinity uh, needs to beat Laurel Highlands this week and then probably beat and it helps. next week. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that would give them the head to head tiebreaker as well. So, um, you know, uh, Laurel Highlands, we talked to their head coach earlier this year. He talked about, you know, Laurel Highlands is one of those teams that's never won a playoff game in their school history. Um, just looking to get back into the postseason and see what can happen. Yeah. The Greater Allegheny Conference. So, Hampton uh, clinched the conference wow. title here. And, but, you know, this, but? but there's a, but yeah. So five teams get in here. And I told you at the beginning of the year, you know, I, I dubbed this like the GA crazy because of how crazy it can get. Um, and, and it looks crazy with five teams getting in, right? Because you got Hamptons already in, then you got Armstrong plum Greensburg Salem at three and two, and then Indiana and Highlands at three and at two and three there. And there is a, but because this just came across as breaking news this evening on oh, Monday breaking night. news, breaking news from Chris Harlan at the Tribune review. The Plum football team will be forced to forfeit games for using an ineligible player. The team learned in season that a player had already exhausted his eligibility and the Whitfield denied a request for additional eligibility. Only one conference game will be forfeited against Mars. But look what this does to the standing. So you had Plum up here in, in third place at three and two. But when you move them down to two and three, they drop all the way down to the bottom. And Mars, all of a sudden, uh, with that forfeit win, is right back into the playoff picture. Hey, how's my how's my indiana team yeah. that i said was going to make the playoffs this year right yep yep and and when you talk about five teams making the playoffs now you've got armstrong and greensburg salem at, at two and three and you've got a four-way a four-way wow pit. Four -way, exactly for those fourth and fifth spots so a lot still to be decided here the greater allegheny conference is certainly delivering on the crazy moniker um and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens if there's an appeal to the PIAA or anything for, for Plum's games. But um, that was, you know, breaking news on a Monday night that, that threw this whole conference for a loop. All right. Like it, man. Like it. Breaking news. Breaking news. And then in the Parkway Conference, Aliquippa is running away with it. Um, then Beaver, uh, who finished last in the conference last year, has a 
chance to clinch a playoff spot this week if they can beat Montour. Um, and then Chartiers Valley and Newcastle battling it out in the middle as well. Um, so it's going to, this one's also going to come down to the wire. Four teams make the playoffs here. So this will probably come down to the wire for that fourth playoff spot. But, um, you know, it's it, Aliquippa is pretty far and away the best team here in the parkway. Moving on to 3A, North Catholic and Freeport have clinched playoff spots and play each other this week. Um, Deer Lakes plays a non-conference game, um, but, you know, keep an eye on Burrow as well, sitting there at one and three. Um, they have a game against Derry, who just got beat like 68 to, no 68 to nothing by East Allegheny. I mean, Derry's been bad. They've been really bad this year. Um, and... Uh, you know, they're, they're zero and seven, but one of those games was a forfeit. So that 384 points they've given up is in like six games. They've been, they've been bad. So <laughs> if, so if Burrow can, can beat a bad dairy team and get to two and three, um, you know, East Allegheny beat them head to head, but then Burrow beat Deer Lakes. So if Burrow can win out potentially, um, you know, you're going to have a three-way tie scenario where Deer Lakes beat East Allegheny, East Allegheny beat Burl, and Burl already beat Deer Lakes. So all Burl has to do is beat the two teams below them, uh, Derry and then Valley next week, to potentially have a shot to get into the playoffs in a three-way tie. And, and four teams make the playoffs here, so that's why that, that three-way tie, only two out of those three will make it. And North Allegheny, or sorry, North Catholic, <laughs> North Catholic plays Freeport this week with the conference title on the line. Uh, in the interstate conference, Elizabeth Forward beat Mount Pleasant this past week for the basically for the top spot in the conference. Uh, they play South Moreland this week and can pretty much wrap up that conference title for the second straight year for the Warriors. Um, Elizabeth Forward's far and away the best team in this conference. It wasn't even close. They beat Mount Pleasant 35 0. And Mount Pleasant, I think, beat South Moreland like 35 0. So it'll be. Um, yeah, it, it won't be close. Um, the one to watch, though, uh, South Allegheny taking on South Park with four teams making the playoffs here. That's a battle of teams right in the middle of the pack. Um, or wait, no, sorry. South Park's playing Mount Pleasant. They play uh, South Allegheny. South Allegheny just beat South Park this week. Sorry. Yeah, South Allegheny beat South Park this week. So South Allegheny now has a chance to snap their long playoff drought that we talked about earlier in the show. Um, and South Moreland, uh, two years ago in 2019, broke a 40-year playoff drought. So potentially, the Scotties are in position to make the playoffs for the second time in three years after not making it for 40 straight years. So good, good for the Scotties. Good stuff. Yep. Winning then, tradition now. Yes, yes. And, and then really, I mean, Central Valley is far and away the best team in 3A. Like all these other classifications are pretty open for who could potentially win the title, not 3A. It's like Central Valley's up here and like, you got North Catholic, Avenue, Elizabeth Forward. Are that isn't much different than 3A across the state. There's there there are there's such a disparity between the haves and the have-nots. It's not funny. I mean, yeah. there, um, you know, the teams that are, you know, uh, let's just say, I think there's about three or four teams in 3A uh, in the state that they have legitimate shots to win the state championship, and then there's everybody else. Yeah. Um, they're, they're that far and away above it. And you obviously you see it in Central Valley. You see it across the state with teams like North Schuylkill, Wyoming, missing and uh, uh, Notre Dame Green Pond. Um, and there really isn't much of anybody else. But, yeah, you know. Yep. Uh, moving on to 2A, uh, Sarah Catholic clinched a playoff spot uh, with their dominant victory this past week over Apollo Ridge where they put up 62 points. Um, Steel Valley on Najee Burt's five touchdown performance once again um, continues rolling on. Those two teams look like they're on a collision course for the last week of the season where this conference title will be decided. Um, in the Century Conference, Washington and Chartier's Houston have clinched playoff spots um, with after McGuffey, um, McGuffey uh, lost to Chartier's Houston this past week. Um, in two, in uh, the Midwestern Conference, five teams will make the playoffs here. Laurel, Beaver Falls, and Nishanik have already clinched spots. Laurel has a win over Beaver Falls. Beaver Falls plays Nishanik this week. So if Beaver Falls beats Nishanik, that would pretty much clinch the conference title for Laurel. Um, Laurel has a game against Nishanik next week. Um, but if Nishanik wins, then they're still in the, the hunt for the conference title if they beat Beaver Falls. Um, and the, the rest of the way, um, New Brighton, if they can beat Riverside here, potentially can get, get back into the mix as well. 
And then in the Three Rivers Conference, I mean, Stowe Rocks just absolutely hammered Western Beaver on Saturday. Um, Stowe Rocks looks like the, the best team in 2A in the Whippeal. Um, I mean, Sarah Catholic is very, very good, but Stowe Rocks just looks pretty far away. I, like I think uh, that Sarah Catholic Steel uh, Steel Valley uh, game Steel Valley game is going to, I think, is going to say a lot uh, about the, you know, the hierarchy in, in 2A. Um, you know, I mean, those are, those are probably, you know, Stowe Rock, Steel Valley and, and, and Sarah Catholic. I mean, that, that, those are the teams in 2A, right? Yeah. And, and, and Laurel and Washington. Yeah. But be, once you get past those five, I don't know if there's a lot more, but those, those five are Laurel, Washington, Stowe Rocks and Sarah Catholic and Steel Valley are, are pretty clearly the top five. Yeah. Well, whoever comes out of 2A in district seven. In my mind, it, it, regardless of, you know, obviously this has been a, it, it's been a Southern Columbia state for so long. In my mind, who comes out of 2A in the Whitfield this year, in my mind, would be the favorite to win the state championship. But that's just me. I think, I think they're going to get a serious challenge from Farrell up in District 10 because Farrell has been outstanding this year. Yeah, I know. Really, really uh, yeah, I saw Farrell in the championship game last year, too. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, Wilmington made the championship last year. They beat Farrell. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. But Farrell, Farrell had to move up from 1A to 2A this cycle and uh, got beat by Wilmington last year. But Farrell had dominated 1A for a while, too. Farrell, Farrell's been very good. But I think I I don't know I like I think Stowe Rocks and Sarah Catholic are both I they're to me the the top two teams in two A in the Whippeal and it's going to be really fun I really hope they play I each like, other in the championship I like game. the Whippeal ch- and I I know what you're talking about but I, I like I like the the, the two A champion out of the Whippeal to to take it all this year yeah, we'll we'll see what happens I mean I would I would love to see it happen I'd love to see you know Southern Columbia dethroned so uh, we'll see. Um, and then moving down to 1A, Cornell has clinched a playoff spot. Like I mentioned earlier, can clinch their first conference title in school history with a win in either of their final two games. Um, you know, they're, they're getting close there. Five teams are going to make the playoffs here. So the top five are pretty far and away, um, you know, better than, than the rest of the pack. So um, they can kind of separate themselves and more or less, uh, you know, wrap things up this week um, uh, for the most part. Um, in the Eastern Conference, Clareton and Bishop Canavan really, to me, look like the best two 1A teams in the Whippeal. Um, I don't really know what to make of this Clareton team this year because they they keep winning, and their only two losses were to two really good 2A teams. I mean, they lost to Steel Valley 14 to 12, and Steel Valley looks like like we just said one of the one of the premier 2A teams. And then they lost to Washington, and Washington's also undefeated. Um, so they're they're unbeaten in their conference, um, and defensively they've just been outstanding. I mean, Bishop Canavan and Greensburg Central Catholic were two really good offensive teams. And they held both of them under 20 points. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, in high school, that's hard to do. And Leechburg, Leechburg, they held to just like uh, the 20 some points, but they they scored a ton on Leechburg too. So Clareton has been so good on defense. You know, Clareton's a team that usually it's their offense that's just lights out, um, but their offense hasn't been as good this year. But their defense has just been so good that it's it's hard to pick against them. And I, I learned my lesson a long time ago: don't pick against Clareton. So. Um, you know, and here, here really the story though is Leechburg potentially snapping that 32 year playoff drought. They can do it with a win against a Manny Christian this week. And then in the Tri County South, West Green and Carmichael's have locked up spots in the playoffs. Um, five teams will make the playoffs here. So most likely it'll be California, Maple Town, and Manessa. And I did mention that Avella, with their win over Bentworth, now potentially could get back into the playoff picture because they do play Manessa uh, in the last week of the season. So if Avella would somehow beat Manessa and get into you know a situation where they would. Both I have don't the think same there's record. any way they'd they have the head to head tiebreaker. Probably not, but nevertheless, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, and the one other thing I wanted to mention is this is the yeah. second and final weekend of the WPIL's uh, food drive that they're doing in conjunction with the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. They're hoping to raise $50,000. Um, I think what they've calculated so far is just the monetary donation. So they have both monetary donations or you can donate like 
food items at games. So I don't think they've counted those items in this total yet. It's just monetary donations. So you can donate online, you can donate at games, um, and it goes to a great cause. So um, thanks to everyone who's been able to donate so far. Um, they are keeping track. When you go in online to donate, um, you can designate a school to get credit for your donation. Um, and then the uh, you know they're having a little competition between schools to see who can raise the most money. Good stuff. Well, well yes. you know, if any of these schools want to stream their games on SSP Network, uh you know we can do uh we can do that all to charity i mean just uh, as you talk to people uh and we're more than happy if there are some schools that want to do that you know it's very easy to set up so that's what ssp network is all about so cool great so all right wow. that concludes our uh you know week eight show Two weeks left in the regular season. A lot of stuff's going to happen. Where did, a lot where of did the season go? Where did it, it go? It flew by. It flew by. But, you know, we're, we're halfway to Hershey. You know, if you want to look at it as a 16-week season all the way through Hershey, we're, we're halfway there now, um, even though the regular season is just winding down. Yeah. So uh, thanks again to Coach Pat Carey from North Hills for joining us today. Um, you know, that was a great victory for them to, to beat Pine Richland. And, um you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in 5A. 5A is, you know, one of those classifications where it's going to be super fun to watch and see how it all plays out. They all are, really. Um, like you said, you know, Mount Lebanon is probably the, the I'll say, odds on favorite in 6A. Central Valley is the hands down favorite in 3A. But other than that, there's there's at least two or three other teams in every classification that could make some noise. And yeah, you know, 4A, 5A yeah. are just wide open. Yeah. Um, I want to thank the fans, you know, for the questions or whatever like that. I think that that brings a totally do, new dynamic you know, to, to, to the broadcast, you know, uh, I really uh, enjoy uh, the fact that we've got some, uh, you know, the, the fans understand, you know, what this show is. And, and I talk about it all the time. It is like the, if you're a, a PA football geek, this is the show for you because it's like Mr. Whippeal geek himself, like putting all this stuff together. And I, I love it. I personally, I mean, I'm on the show, but I just love the show and everything you do, my friend. I mean, it is fantastic. Um, and I like to jump in there too. You know, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, I, I disagreed, you know, with the fact that you were kind of poo-pooing Mount Lebanon there. I think that uh, they're definitely very much, uh, you know, the dominating team in 6A. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win, but right now, I mean, they seem to be the overriding favor. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I know that uh, they were definitely the team that uh, when I was on the field with St. Joe Prep Saturday uh, that we were talking about, uh, trying to find more information out on. So, um, you know, just give you a little hint on that so <laughs> anyway enjoyed yeah. the show this week my yes. friend yeah it was good and um yeah like you said thanks to everyone who sent questions in um yeah we really appreciate them we appreciate everyone who watches so um thanks a lot to everyone for tuning in and um you know check us out uh wpal underscore blitz on twitter with blitz on facebook um since we're on facebook now um in our that? rarely used instagram um, that i've tried to post a little I, bit i gotta too. get on the, yeah. the i mean ssp network's got a facebook account i just gotta get it linked to like your facebook account I, you know and i'm not a facebook guy i mean we're twitter guys and yeah i like twitter you know better. stuff Twitter's like that better. it's real easy so you want to yeah. go back to our thing there oh, yes. so yeah, i can I'll just sign our, off yeah put up our accounts so people know where to find us here so yeah thanks thanks everyone for tuning in and uh we'll see what happens the rest of the season yeah thanks everybody appreciate your questions and we'll see you next week take care now